Hello and welcome to Percentages with Multipliers. From me, Mr McIver, at the Marylebone Maths Hub. You'll see it says part one on the screen. There will be a part two to follow looking at some other types of problem. So today we're going to start with asking the question, what are percentages? And the answer is percentages are fractions with a denominator of 100. For example, 50% is 50 hundredths, which is one half, which is 0 0.5. Stop. Wait, wait. Just back up a bit. Percentages are sort of fractions, but they're not exactly the same. Percentages are actually proportions of some quantity. They're not really numbers in the way that fractions are. I can ask you to mark one half on the number line and you can find it. I can't really ask you to mark 50%. You'd have to ask me 50% of what? So percentages are proportions of a quantity. They are invariably proportions out of 100. But it's important to remember that percentages only exist when they're a proportion of some other quantity. So 50% of £10 actually means 50 hundredths times £10. And notice that multiplication sum in there, which is, of course, a half times £10 or 0 0.5 times £10. And you see all these multiplication signs here, here and here? Percentages are, in fact, multiplication sums. 50% of £10 is 0.5 times £10. But they're not just multiplication sums, they are in disguise. During this presentation, you will be learning how to transform a whole bunch of different types of percentage problems into multiplication sums. So percentages are simply multiplications. We can rewrite all of these percentage problems, 50% of £10, 19% of £280, 31.4% of 68 kilograms, although it's a proportion of a quantity, it doesn't have to be a quantity of money. We can rewrite all of those percentage problems as multiplication problems. So 50% is just 50 hundredths times or 0.5 times. 19% of is 19 hundredths times or 0.19 times. And it doesn't have to be a whole number of percent. 31.4% is 31.4 hundredths. Now I know you'd never actually write 31.4 over 100, but you can instantly turn it into a decimal and write it perfectly reasonable as 0.314 times 68 kilograms. And so it goes on. All of those percentage problems can be turned into multiplications. And notice the last one. It works perfectly well for percentages over 100%. 341% of a number is simply 3.41 times that amount. Now this is particularly useful when we want to increase, or in a moment later I'll show you how to decrease, by a particular percentage. So for instance, say I ask you to add 20% to all of those prices. A typical problem you might have in a shop, we've got to add that at 20% to all of these prices. Let's just zoom in on the first one. We could do it simply by working out 20% of £10 in the usual way, 20 out of 100 times 10, 0.2 times 10 equals £2, then adding the amount of money we've just worked out onto the £10 we started with and saying, increase £10 by 20%, it's £12. But we could cut down all those calculations to just one sum. Notice that we start off with £10. When I say increase £10 by 20%, what I really mean is work out what 20% of £10 is, then add it onto the top. Now I know that 20% is just £2, so the total is obviously £12. But notice, that £10 is 100% of the amount we started off with. And we've added on another 20%. So altogether we have 
120% of £10. The answer to our problem to increase £10 by 20% can be written as find 120% of £10, which is just a multiplication calculation such as the ones we saw earlier. So now, all our add 20% problems turn into almost identical calculations. £10 plus 20% just means work out 120% of £10, which is 120 hundreds times £10, or 1.2 times £10. £28 plus 20% is, oh, 1.2 times £28. £39.50 plus 20% is 1.2 times £39.50, and so on and so on. Every single add 20% to this amount question is simply a times by 1.2 question. And it's very nearly as easy as that when you subtract a percentage. What about percentage reduction? It's a sale. Marks down all these prices by 20%. Once again, we're going to look carefully at that £10. And once again, we could work out our 20% and this time take it away from the £10 we started off with. But if we take our £10, mark off our 20% and then simply take it away, we can see that we started off with 100% took away 20% and were left with 80%. So that whole combination of calculations you see at the top of the page can be rewritten. What is 80% of £10? So, to carry out a percentage reduction of 20% on all these quantities, we simply work out 80% of each of those quantities which is 0.8 times £10, or 0.8 times £28, or 0.8 times £39.50, or 0.8 times, times £1,928.50. Once again, this multi-step calculation has turned into a one-step calculation. But where this method really comes into its own is when you have to carry out percentage increase or decreases lots and lots of times. Why would you want to do that? Well, one of the most common calculations in the world is to work out compound interest. This is what banks do every day when they figure out how much you owe them or how much they have to pay you in interest. Repeated percentage increase often crops up in compound interest. Repeated percentage reduction often crops up in depreciation calculations. Depreciation is what you call it when you buy an object like a car or a computer that actually drops in value over time. So, let's have a look at an example of each and you'll see how simple this becomes. We'll split our page in two and start off by looking at compound interest. Let's suppose you're borrowing £1,000 from the bank and you're offered an interest rate of 15% PA. That's short for per annum. It just means each year. Bit of jargon. 15% per annum. The bank charges you 15% of what you've borrowed every year in interest. And the way banks charge interest is that if you don't pay it back at the end of the first year, they charge you more interest in the second year, including on the interest they have already charged. You'll see how this works in a minute. But the sort of question you might want to ask is, how much do you owe after five years of running up interest charges at 15% per annum? Well, the first thing you have to do is figure out what the multiplier is. Well, 15% per annum, it's going up. So the multiplier is going to be 1.15. You start off by borrowing £1,000. So after one year, you owe them £1,000 times 1.15. That's £1,000 plus 15%, £1,150. At the beginning of the second year, that figure there is what you owe them. You then pay 15% interest on that whole amount there. So that's what you owe them after two years. You then use this figure here as your basis for year three and add on another 15% and then add on another 15% and then add on another 15%. So that figure there is what you owe after five years. That is a rather cumbersome calculation. But look, what you've done is you've done 1,000 times 1.15 
taken the answer and multiplied it by 1.15 again, taken the answer and multiplied it by 1.15 again, what you've really done is you've multiplied £1,000 by 1.15 times 1.15 times 1.15 times 1.15 times 1.15 or in the mathematical shorthand that you probably know about you've done 1000 pounds times 1.15 to the power 5 and in one step you get to this total figure here 2011 pounds 36 for compound interest multipliers are the only way to go now depreciation calculations are similar to compound interest calculations in that there's a percentage change which is the same year after year after year. The big difference is the value goes down. For instance, if you buy a computer for £800, it will actually fall in value by about 30% a year, or as I've said here, 30% PA per annum. And it's reasonable to ask the question, what will it actually be worth after three years? If it's falling by 30% per annum, that means it holds 70% of its value. So the multiplier I need is 0 0.7 because your multiplier is always the proportion you want to end up with. I start with my £800 computer and after one year it's worth £800 times 0 0.7, £560. After two years, £560 times 0 0.7, £392. And after three years, £392 times 0 0.7, or 274.40. As before, I can simplify this hugely by thinking of it as 800 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7, or 800 times 0 0.7 to the power 3. In one line, this rather cumbersome calculation has been carried out with complete accuracy. So to recap, we've said that all percentage problems can be thought of as multiplication problems. And the big idea throughout this presentation has been that of a multiplier. If it's a very simple one like 80% of £28, you simply turn that 80% into a fraction times or a decimal times and that is the calculation you do. If it's a percentage change such as an increase you need to take the percentage and either add it on in the case of an increase, so increase £50 by 17% becomes work out 117% of, which is 117 hundredths times or 1.17 times. And for a decrease, you have to take the percentage away from 100%. So if I'm reducing 140 by 25%, I simply work out 75% of, or 75 hundredths times, or 0 0.75 times. And in the really, really useful instance where you have a repeated percentage change, such as I want to increase £1,500 by 12% per year for three years, the first thing I do is I turn my 12% into a multiplier. It's an increase, so it's 1.12. And I simply do 1500 times 1.12 times 1.12 times 1.12, which as you know is simply 1500 times 1.12 to the power 3. And it's when you're doing repeated percentage calculations and the ones we look at in the next video that multipliers really come into their own. Now you need to complete the questions on the worksheet and we'll talk about them in your next lesson.